TT DML lectures. I'm giving on multi-functions, multi-band, reconfigurable high-Q filters. My name is Rafat Mansour. I'm a professor at the University of Waterloo in Canada. So the DML talk will address the motivation for using uh, tunable filters and the challenges of uh, realizing those filters. Then we are going to talk about comparison of the existing tuning elements we have nowadays to be able uh, to tune filters. Then we will uh, address several techniques, including a technique for minimizing the number of tuning elements. Then we will show you several examples of tunable filters uh, tuned by piezo motors or MEMS or uh, PCM technology. Then we will address the multiband filters and the tunable multiband filters. So we have several motivations for using tunable filter. We'll talk about them. We'll show you examples of system applications. One of the system application is a full duplex, uh, which is being proposed for uh, some of the 5G systems where you have received and channel and transmit channel operate at the same frequency. So there is tremendous interference between the receiver and transmit. So you need to cancel that interference. So tunable filter can be potentially used on that. We'll talk in details about some of these applications. And then we will address the challenges because people develop tunable filter, but there are tremendous challenges to make truly a uh, tunable filter with acceptable performance. And there are several of them. And uh, we will talk as well about how to particularly try to, to minimize the number of tuning elements, because when you have more tuning elements that add to the complexity of the tuning control system, the cost and size, and so it's always nice to have less uh, tuning elements. We will uh, give you a detailed comparison between the existing tuning elements we have nowadays, and we don't really have much. We have piezo motors, we can have semiconductors in the form of um, the diodes and the switches and varactors. We have uh, barium strontium titanate, this is varactors, BST varactors, or you can have BEMS, we can make switch capacitors, or we have phase change material switches, we can make switch capacitors as well. Uh, to reconfigure the filters. We'll talk in details about those uh, tuning elements. We will, uh, you see here, we'll talk about the switches when, because the switch is a basic building block, whether for tunable filter or any really uh, tunable component like fish shifters, uh, tunable matching network, uh, uh, tunable delay line, you name it. So we'll define a figure of merit and we'll show you quantitatively how you characterize uh, basically, or how do you judge what the performance uh, of, of the switch you are using? And when, uh, since the phase change material technology is a new technology, uh, it's been used for many years for optical memory applications, but over the past 10 years, it has been proposed for uh, uh, RF applications, and we have been doing uh, work on that for, uh, for many years now. We have developed several components. Uh, this will show you here a switch. We can develop switches, beautiful switches, up to 67 gigahertz. So we're going to talk about that in details uh, during the DML lectures. And then we'll show you examples, examples of filters done by uh, uh, piezoelectric uh, motors. This is just tiny motors. And you can see here the filter has absolute constant bandwidth over the tuning range. You can see it is constant um, uh, retail loss as well. Uh, this is done for real application for IMAX and Wi-Fi 5 and 5 gigahertz, Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz application. Then we'll show you several examples as well of how to realize a tunable filter with just only one tuning element, yet still maintain absolute constant bandwidth and you maintain the retail loss performance over the tuning range. Here we'll show you, for example, uh, concept we uh, we develop uh, for just the resonators, 
vertical cavity and by using just single one motor. Nevertheless, we can see here you have four cavities and we managed to get a chinable filter with a constant absolute bandwidth. Then we'll show you some examples as well of using MEMS, MEMS to tune uh, filters. Here we'll show you examples for comb line filters and dielectric resonator filters and many, many, many more that have been done by our group and many other groups. We'll show you some of these, uh, these examples. Uh, we'll show you as well the use of phase change materials. Here we developed recently, we integrated the phase change material technology with the saw technology monolithically. So we build the acoustic devices, acoustic filters, and the phase change materials switches integrated in one ship to be able to develop a switch filter bank as, as the example we'll, uh, we see here. Then we will talk about multi-band filters because multi-band filters is part of the multifunction filter and they're again used in many applications. We will address in details during the DML talk. Uh, so there are several approaches. We'll see that there is advantage and disadvantage, but we'll talk in details during the DML talk on that. We'll show you some examples. We have been working on that for the past uh, Many years we developed several dual band, triple band, dielectric resonators, you name it. Uh, we'll show you several examples of, um, of those multi band filters. And then we will show you how to be able to get tunable multi band filters, meaning you have one input and one output. So you have different channels, and each channel can be tuned and can be tuned actually in the, in the center frequency. And uh, and the bandwidth. So so the talk will address many things related to tunable filter. Nevertheless, many of the concepts we uh, we are discussing, particularly when it comes to the use of the tuning element, can be used in many many other components like uh, uh, fish shifters, impedance matching tunable uh, tunable uh, uh, matching network, and many many other reconfigurable uh, networks. So thank you so much, but this is just give you an overall outline of the DML talk.